Hello, I am the Story Girl, and welcome to the story of the Blood Brothers. Just so you know, even though there are a lot of people who do not consider this a scary story, it does have some scary elements. Just so you're aware, if you would like to preview this for a younger audience or for a more sensitive audience. There once was a man and his wife who, sadly, had no children to their name, even though they would love to have raised a son or daughter. And they did not have very much money. And one year when things were especially tight, the only thing they had to live on were the fish that the man would catch by the river. He would go down every day and catch a fish, and every day the fish would be smaller and smaller and smaller, until one day he pulled out a fish that he knew wouldn't be enough for two people. He would give it to his wife, hold it out of the water, and heard a small voice saying, Please, sir, please, please, don't! Kill me! What was that? Said the old man. Is someone there? It's me, it's me, it's me. And the old man looked and he heard and he followed the sound and saw that it was the fish talking. A talking fish? Said the man. Yes, yes, sir, please, please throw me back in the water. If you do, you'll be much better off. The young fish said the old man, I will be much better off if I have you in my belly. You're the only thing my wife and I have to eat. I'm not good enough for a meal, said the fish, but if you throw me back in, I promise that when you wake up tomorrow morning, you will find that there will be a plant growing in your garden. If you dig up the root and you chop it up and you feed it to your wife and then bury the rest of it underneath the ground, some very wonderful things will happen to you. Very wonderful things. Yes, sir, yes, please, please, don't kill me, <laughs> gasped the fish. Well, the old man was very tender-hearted and the fish was certainly not big enough for a meal and so he unhooked it and threw it back into the stream where it quickly swam off. Last time I see that little chap, said the man, and he walked back home to his wife and explained to her what, the, what had happened with the fish. They went to bed that night and the next morning they looked out into their yard and saw a large plant growing up out of the yard, one that had never been there before. Well, the old man went and dug it up and chopped it all up and fed it to his wife and went and took the top that he had not fed to his wife and buried it back in the ground. The next day, he looked outside and he saw standing right next to the spot where he had buried that plant were two beautiful horses, two shining suits of armor, and two sharp swords. Well, what do you suppose those could be for? said the man. Oh, I have an idea, said the woman, and she patted her belly. Nine months later, she gave birth to two sons, twins, who looked exactly like each other, except for one twin had a small red blood spot right there on his hand, and the other had two small blood spots right there on his hand. It was the only way to tell them apart. The two boys grew and they were very happy to be best friends. They helped their father, they did all of the work, and they brought their fortunes higher, but their parents were old and their father soon passed away. Well, as soon as the two brothers grew to be men, the elder of the two went to his brother and said, Brother, I feel inside of me 
a need to explore, to go out into the world, but I do not wish to leave our mother behind. Don't worry about that, said his twin. I have no need to go out into the world. I want to stay here with mother. I'll stay and take care of her. You go off and have your adventures. I don't want to leave you with nothing, though. And he reached in his pocket and he pulled out a small round stone. He dropped it in his brother's hand and he said, you see that? You see how white and clear and crystal it is? I do, said his brother. If you ever wake up and you look at this stone and you see that it's all dark and clouded over and misted and gray, you will know that I am either dead or dying. I pray the day never comes, brother. And he slipped the stone into his pocket gave his brother an embrace and waved him off. The brother had put on his set of shining armor and had his shining sword and jumped aboard his own horse and rode off into the darkening sky. Well, he traveled the world having many different adventures for a whole year and a day. And after that year and a day were up, he found himself traveling along a river wide rushing river till he saw something very strange ahead of him. It appeared to be a girl. Yes, a girl, a young maiden who was tied to a tree. But she wasn't struggling. She was hanging limply, staring at anything, the ground, the other trees around her, not making a sound, not moving. Well, what does this mean, he thought, and he rode his horse up to the girl. She heard the horse and looked up and said, Sir, how is it that you are here? Do you not know that there is a dreaded beast that has been plaguing this countryside? A dreaded beast, you say, said the elder twin. Why, oh, I had not heard it. But tell me, why are you tied to the tree? It is because of the beast, said the girl. I am the daughter of the king of this land, and I am the last of all the young maidens of the land. This monster has insisted that he will only keep from feasting upon all of the people of the land if one young maiden is tied to this tree for him to feast on every new year. And I am the last of the young maidens of my land. Huh, that sounds very serious. Tell me, has anything else been tried? Oh, no, she said, this monster is hideous. Anybody who sees it is struck with fear. I will await you, the lady, said the twin, and I will defend you from this beast, even if it takes my own life. Surely it will, sir. And the two waited. They waited all that day and all that night. And the next morning, the river began to rush faster and bubble ominously and up out of the river rose a hideous beast hissing its 12 heads. <sighs> Foolish man, I only require the girl, but I will eat you happily if you stand in my way. I will stand in your way. And he drew his sword and the battle was on. And the battle was sore for many hours as he chopped at the heads of this fearsome beast. But every head that he chopped off leapt right back on to the beast's neck. <laughs> Spoke the beast. I cannot be killed by chopping off my heads. Well. The elder twin did his best with the beast for a while until he saw that one of the heads appeared to be wearing a crown of horns, the only head of the dozen. That must be the head that must be slaughtered. And so he chopped his way through the heads until he sliced through the crowned head. And the whole beast fell oozing with blood and pus back into the river and was washed away to the sea. You did it, said the princess. 
You did it. You killed the fearsome beast. Yes, my lady. And I would do much worse for you, I assure you. And he cut her bonds and carried her off to the kingdom, to the palace where her lord father had been weeping for days, knowing that his daughter had been killed by the fearsome beast. Surprised he was to see her being led through the streets of his own kingdom by this handsome warrior. My son, he said, you have brought my daughter back to me. And for repayment, you may have her hand in marriage. Only if the maiden would wish it, said the elder twin. Yes, yes, I would. And they were married that very day. The princess took the elder twin away into their secret suite of rooms on their marriage night, into a very strange room that was filled with windows. To there they were together and they held hands and laughed and got to know each other better. But as the evening progressed, the brother was distracted by the sound sound coming from one of the windows. He leapt to his feet and walked to the window. Oh no, please do not go towards that window. Oh my dear, I hear something. No, no, no. Stay with me. Stay with me. Do not follow the music. I must, I must follow that sound. My husband, she clasped his hand. Every single man that has followed that sound has never returned to our kingdom. I must follow the sound. And he left her in their room, ran off to his horse, hopped aboard with his armor and his sword, and rode off in pursuit of the enchanting, beautiful music that was playing like fairy song in the woods. He rode and he rode, he rode for days, until he came to a little hut. The side of the hut he saw a little old woman with a long braid of hair. What do you seek, warrior? Said the old woman. Old woman, said the elder twin. I, I seek the source of that music. Ah, ah, well, the source of that music lies within my own hut. Won't you go in? jumped off of his horse and walked right into the hut. But as he did, she whipped him sharply with her long hair and he dissolved into a pile of bones. There's another, she said, and she used her broom to sweep his pile of bones out into the yard, which was filled. The younger twin saw that his beautiful, shining, clear glass stone had gone cloudy and dark and gray. He put it in his pocket and went to his mother. Mother, my brother is in trouble. You must go to him, she said. Not a moment to lose. He put on his own armor and hopped aboard his own horse with his own sword and rode off in the direction that his brother had come from. He rode and he rode and he rode, asking about anybody, talking to people, but nobody seemed to have known who his brother was or seemed to recognize his brother in his own visage. Till finally he rode up to the palace steps where a lonely princess was looking out of the window. Her face lit up when she saw him and she ran down the steps. Oh, my husband, she flung her arms around him. Oh, you have returned. You are the only one to have returned. Uh, yes, yes, my dear, I am your husband and I have returned. Yes, and you must never leave me again. And she led him off to the room of windows. And he was very cautious about her, wondering what could have happened. Could this very, really be his sister-in-law? Surely it was. But when he stepped into the room, he heard the sound intoxicating sound, the beautiful sound of music. And he walked towards the window and she grabbed his hand and said, Husband, you have just come from there. And are you intoxicated again with the sound of that music? You shall not follow it again. Ah, thought the younger twin. My 
brother must have pursued that music. I must go, he said. I must follow that music. Not again, said the princess. But the younger twin was not to be deterred. He ran from the palace and hopped aboard his own horse and rode off. He rode and he rode and he rode and he rode until he saw a traveler on the road, an old man with a bag over his shoulder, shuffling along. Ho there, young warrior, said the old man. Oh, ho there, old man, and he hopped off his horse. Is there any, any way I can serve you? No, 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 just old is all. Say, you wouldn't happen to be going down this road, would you? Yes, I am searching for my brother. He looks just like me. Ah, I see. Your brother must have been enchanted by that music. Do you hear it? Yes, sir, I've been hearing it for many hours. The music is the sound of the singing of the daughter of the beautiful voice who is trapped inside of the hut of a witch who keeps her trapped there to lure young men. The witch hates young men. She uses her magic hair to whip them and transform them into nothing but a pile of bones. You don't say. Tell me, old man, is there any way to defeat this witch? <laughs> the only way to defeat this witch is to grab her by the hair and force her to tell you the antidote to her spell. And then you must chop off her hair. Chop off her hair, yes, boy chop off her hair, and she will no longer be able to live. I will do it, sir. Good lad, good lad. He continued to shuffle on down the road. Well, the younger twin jumped aboard his own horse and began to ride off till he saw in the distance a little shack, a little hut, and a yard covered with bones. He rode up to the house and he saw the old woman sweeping with her smile. <sighs> Young warrior, he hopped down from the horse and she looked at him closer. Not possible, she said, and she looked down at the bones at her feet. I killed you just days ago. It's not possible that you could have gotten a drunk from my well. That is the only antidote to the spell. Some witchcraft is here. Yes, he said, and he grabbed her by the hair and yanked her around and said, which one, which pile of bones belongs to my brother, the one who looks just like me? It's that one, she said. And he looked in her eye and could see that she was lying and yanked her by the hair and said, tell the truth. And she said, the bones are all the same to me. I've killed so many young men in my time and I'll kill you. And she began to struggle, but he lifted his sword and sliced off her hair. The moment he had sliced off the hair, she crumbled to dust. Even the hair that was in his hand, he found, turned, He wasted no time in going to the well and drawing up as much water as he could, sprinkling it all over the yard, dousing the bones in the water. And as he did, the bones began to rattle and shake and knit together and spring forth into a man. But that was not his brother. He went and got another bucket and sprinkled them across until there were 20, 30, 40 men in the yard. He finally got the last bucket and sprinkled it on the last pile of bones and up stood his own twin brother and they embraced each other and looked towards the hut they entered the hut and they saw in there a beautiful woman singing 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 the younger twin took her hand and led her out of the house she opened her eyes where am i what has happened you were trapped by a witch said the younger brother, but now you are free. Free, said the young woman. 
free to return to my king father, if that is what you wish. And they set all the men free to go back to their homes and families, and the twin brothers mounted their twin horses, and taking the young princess with them, rode back to the kingdom, where this princess was given a fine welcome, for she was the younger sister of the wife of the elder twin. And the younger twin married the younger sister. They brought their mother from their little hut far away to live in this new kingdom as the mother of the twin princes. The end. I am the story girl and I do not have a twin, but I do have doppelgangers all around. In this story, which is called the story of the Blood Brothers, these two brothers are born under miraculous circumstances and end up becoming princes at the very end. Thank you for joining the story today. If you enjoyed this story, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. And you can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook, The Story Girl, that is story with an I. If you're really excited about it being October and Halloween and you have some spooky stories of your own, find somebody to tell them. I don't care for spooky stories myself. I like fun stories better. I like happy stories better. But that doesn't mean you have to. Find somebody to tell a story to this Halloween. Bye.